Uh, huge congratulations on the show. Thank you. Um, I feel like, strangely, doing this junket, it's almost like doing a Marvel junket and that there's so many characters and so many things going on and so many timelines and everything else. It's just... <laughs> It's a bit like its own cinematic television universe, shall I say. Which is pretty cool, um, I might add. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool that you've got all of these uh, time or timelines. It's all the rage these days. Thank you, Courtney <laughs> um, Camp. Thank you, Courtney Camp. 50 cents. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how did this one come about for you? Because I know you've done some theatre and you've done some other films and stuff. How did this come about and why did this kind of pique your interest? You know, it was it was one of those things. So Madam Secretary for me, I'd done that show for six years. It was coming to an end and I was ready for something different. Uh, I love playing Daisy Grant. Um, even before that, I loved uh, doing all my Broadway work. But, you know, I'm constantly wanting to exercise every side of myself and play different roles, um, do things that are unexpected. And for me, playing a character like this is something that I always dreamt of doing. I, I've always dreamt of playing a truly three-dimensional character. Um, and especially as a black woman, like, you know, we don't really get roles like this a lot that really plays uh, on all of the things that we're really great at and that we can bring to a situation, even though it could, it is a part of you. It's not necessarily how the world views us. And so it's very, at times it's felt like, you know, the world has been very one-dimensional in a lot of things. and you know, that's great, right? It's one facet of who we are um, as black women. So for me, I was always on the hunt to, to find my thing. Like, you know, if we're talking about it, like, okay, where's my Sopranos? Where's my all this and that? Where are all these things? Like, and I started to think like, well, women can be as boss in it. I wanna see like someone who is just really three dimensional. And I really spoke it into existence. I went out to LA and you know, it kind of happened. I got this audition to meet with the creators um, of the power, the power world. And obviously I took the meeting because I, the opportunity to sit and hopefully maybe meet with Courtney Kemp was super interesting to me. And it was given to me that it was a power show, a power spinoff. I didn't know which one it was. I didn't know who, what I'd be playing. All I, all I knew was I read the script and I read the character description and I was like, did I just secret this into my life? Like, what is happening? Oh, I have to get this part. This is me. This is so me. And so I remember talking to my agents and my husband, like, uh, I have never seen a character like this ever. I've not read and I've read for a lot of things. And I have not seen one like this. This has to be me. So I went in, I talked to the creators and one thing led to another. And it was happened the way it was supposed to happen. <laughs> um, here I am. I'm Raquel Thomas and raising Kane, and it just happens to be uh, Kane and Stark's origin story. It's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, I mean, it, it does sound. You know, I joked at the top of the interview about it being Marvel and secrets and stuff, but it kind of sounds like it, given that it was <laughs> you didn't really know no kind of what it what know, it was. There was a secret about he was it. Playing Kane and Stark, I didn't know I was playing Kane and Stark's mom. I just knew, like, holy crap, this mother son dynamic is so necessary and is so needed and you know this black woman being a mama bear to her son while also being like badass and you know in one she's fuck you in one lane but then also i love you son and like very much like vulnerable and a loving mother i was intrigued by that very much intrigued by watching someone in such power also be a mother and how she navigated that within the little script that i got so when i found out holy crap, she's playing the mother of one of the most iconic power characters. That was, that was exciting. As an actor, it's always super exciting to sort of jump into something like that and play. And I was ready. Yeah. And this, I mean, this show and a lot of other shows, uh, Empire and a few other shows that have come out in the last few years have really done a great job of showcasing these communities and, and diversity and all of these people that we don't really really see as you say they're, they're they're parts that you might not have got 10 years ago i just yeah. wonder how important you think this show has been in helping to to take those steps to very. have a bit of a, a bit more of an inclusion and for us yeah. you know all over the world very, to see this. very 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 important um it is a show for a very underrepresented audience, an audience that actually watches TV like everyone else. And, you know, what we're talking about and the themes of these shows, it's in, it's in real life. This, it's just like 
this is the real world. And where I, as an actor, I get to bring life and I get to humanize Raquel Thomas, even though she is a drug dealer, but you don't understand. It's very easy to judge it, you know, but you don't understand until you actually go in and you find out who these characters are. And so what I love is being able to, um, to kind of lift the lid or, or I don't even know what I'm trying to say, but you know, go into the heart of these characters and, and what the stakes, you know, and what they want. And, and there are a lot of people who can identify with characters. There are a lot of, for me in this universe, you know, someone might know a ghost, right? Like ghosts exist. Tasha's exist, uh, Tommy's exist, um, Canaan exists, that family dynamic within the Raising Canaan, those type, so those type of characters exist, um, but it's getting to know the people. It's peeling back what you thought you knew and really getting to the root of who these people are. And that's what I am so proud of as an actor, as, as an actor of color, is get to speak to an audience that has been super um, um, underrepresented and misrepresented at times. You know, it's been the stereotypical way of telling these stories because these stories have been told before, but I love that in this world, we really get to humanize in a way and really just focus on being grounded and real and raw and take you on this journey. Yeah. And it's dealing with and very I, complex I, idea, complex themes, I, I, right? I, I, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, these people are, are chasing their dreams, even if yes. they're in extreme, you know, measures and stuff like that, which is a real thing. And that's it's, it's great to, to see that. Exactly. Yeah. It's the 90s. It's outside Jamaica, Queens. It's the 90s. It's where they are in time. It's where they are in society. And, you know, it's how they choose to, to do things and how they choose to better themselves. And, you know, you really get to see these characters wanting more for themselves throughout this entire thing. And so that's what I'm most proud of. Yeah, and I was and actually my next question was going to be about the the '90s setting because we've seen uh, you know work of Spike Lee, John Singleton, so many other great uh, directors that have done movies like this before. But mm -hmm. in movies, you only get to kind of skim the surface. You know, with a TV yeah. show, you get to go a bit deeper, as you say. How how was it stepping into stepping back in time and and taking on not just the character but to be in that environment of the '90s? It. I, I didn't know how we were going to do it. And uh, to be honest, like, you know, when you do a period piece, you're like, okay, let hope it doesn't look like dress up and how are we going to do this? But, I, you know, I already knew they were going to do it in a great ways because stars don't play around and Courtney Kemp ain't playing around. So I already knew like that whole work. I didn't have to think about all that. Um, Frank, from the costumes, the fashion, Frank Fleming, Frank Fleming, the gay white, you know, what they chose to dress us in, um, the different settings, the different directors of how we went to Jamaica, Queens, how we went, how we used New York City um, in the different areas we filmed to, to, to film in those areas that we're talking about in our show that are so iconic to the series, but to New York in the 90s. It was pretty cool, you know, to, to hear people talk about, oh, I grew up there. Oh, yeah, man, this means a lot to me because this, this, this and was happening here. And to go to those communities and be there and shoot, that meant so much. It, it made it super authentic, you know. And our crew just really got it. And the creators of our show, you know, the direction, the music, all of it is just it's pretty specific. It's specific work and it's fantastic work. Yeah. Let me ask you about working with uh, Makai. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Because he, he's, I mean, my goodness me, what a performance. And some of the other younger performers that you've got around you are just extraordinary. But tell me about working with, with him and having him as your, as your on-screen son. Because, I mean, from what I could see, it's a, you know, he's, it's a barnstorming performance that, that will let him jump into probably whatever other role I, I got I get goosebumps <laughs> I, I've literally been saying this to him since the moment I met him I um I've been fortunate enough to work with a lot of people on a lot of different journeys different age ranges and everything um so at this point you know I started off as the young one of the group and now I'm at a place to where like I have a little bit of wisdom and advice that I can give to people and Makai is one of those performers that I is going to have a long career to be so young and to take the responsibility and take over the mantle of such an iconic character and to do it in the way that he's done within this show is really phenomenal. And I haven't seen it 
happened like this before. I am so excited to be working with him from the very moment we met. It's, it's, it's been a vibe. We, we, we kind of bonded right from the very beginning. So I went to his um, chemistry read and I had to learn my lines. At first I thought, okay, well, he's going to be the only one on camera. So, you know, we got to figure out if we have good chemistry. So they send me like two pages of scenes, two of the most iconic scenes, I think, between mother and son of the first episode. It's like, okay, go do this at a studio right now. And no pressure. It's, this is who we're thinking about for the part. Go do it. So I'm like, okay, I want to be the best for him. I just want to be so, I want to be on my game. So he has all this to play off of. So I memorize it in the car. We get there, we meet, and he has this cherub baby face and already he looks the part and he weirdly enough, favors 50, which is very strange. Um, and from the minute Rob Hardy was like, go, you guys are both going to be on camera together. It was, it, we just created magic in my opinion. And I loved it. I mean, we were up in each other's faces really going in and it's like, if he didn't get it, he was going to make sure that they, they remembered who he was. And we brought that kind of intensity and that kind of energy and that kind of respect for one another throughout every scene that we've been in throughout the entire series. And it is a joy to work with him. And I am so excited for people to watch him and watch what he does with this role. It's a, such an honest, grounded performance and so real and authentic that uh, he's going to do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay obviously you're playing his mother on screen did you did you did you feel yourself becoming quite protective of him of course else? i'm so protective oh, yeah. i tell him all the time even when i send him <laughs> little dms i'm so proud of you i'm so proud of you and i'm like take this moment take live in this moment i know i'm being your mother right now i know you have a mom but i can't help it he's like never stop being you i love it i'm so happy you're on this journey with me i am such a mama bear already <laughs> with him he is my tv son i love him so much I'm so proud of him and um, yeah, I'm excited to, to get to play with him, hopefully uh, for as long as I can. Yeah. And then uh, I guess as a final question, if you, if you, if you do get to do this again, because obviously it's a, it's set in a specific time, so you can delve back in if you, if you wanted to, and given the success of the show, I mean, yeah. it's, it's a possibility. If you, if you don't, what's the thing you might miss most about playing Patina? Is there a specific thing about her character or her wardrobe or just something specific that you'll, you'll always kind of remember when she gets brought up in a conversation or something like that? Um, well, I'm not, well, so what I'm going to miss about Raquel, we're not even talking about what I'm going to miss about Raquel. Cause I'm hoping we get the opportunity again. I said your name, didn't I? I'm so sorry. You did. I mean, but of course no, I did. Please. Sorry, that's confused. That's, uh, it's all good. You didn't confuse that's me. That's the stress of exactly the sport that's happening talking. in a couple of hours playing with my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, stress. No, I, I would, would miss the opportunity to give myself over to such an amazing role that has required everything of me. Um, it is a role that I've had the most fun doing. It is a role that has scared me to death, but in all of the best ways. Um, I've put my heart and soul into developing this character and constantly keeping people on their toes with who they think she is. Um, you know, you never know with her. And I try, I've tried to give her so many layers and layers are important to me. And, and really her heart is, uh, what I love the most and, 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 and how, how fiercely protective she is of those around her. Um, and that she's a fighter and that she's never going to stop. And so there's so many things I would miss about her, but really just at the core of it, her heart. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, hopefully you get to do it again and you, uh, you won't miss her for too long. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Absolute pleasure chatting to you and good luck with the absolutely. show. Take care. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey you guys! Hey you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? Yeah, it is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey you guys!